How's it going everyone, Taki here. The stars have finally aligned and we now have working HDMI on the RG350 and the 350M. I've been testing this for a few hours already and even though there are a few hiccups with this update, this feature works much better than I originally thought it would. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the update process and show you some HDMI footage from my device. First off, grab the HDMI update from the description box below and extract it. Take the updated OPK file and place it on your external SD card inside the apps folder. Then boot up your device. Once your device is booted, go over to the applications and you should see something called OS update. If it doesn't show up, just make sure your paths are correct and reinsert the SD card. Click on that application to start the update process. Your first screen will look different than this because I've already gone ahead and done the update, but you should see a notice screen that asks you to confirm the update for your device. It's important that you make sure that you're using the actual firmware package for the device that you have. I'm using an original RG350 for this example with a 480p screen, so I'm using the RG350M update package. To start the update, select update and press the X button. This process will take about one to two minutes to complete. You shouldn't really need to do this, but if there's any issue with your update, you can always hold down Y and X to use your old firmware. Press X again, and that will start the reboot process. After your device boots up, you have one more step to enable HDMI. Go over to the settings menu and select Gmenu 2X, and you should see HDMI set to off. Turn it on, and your device should be recognized by your TV immediately. The update package also includes a dock file that will tell you some things you need to be aware of, or your games will run too fast, like the example on screen, or too slow. Make sure you read the document carefully so you can configure your emulators, and you should be good to go with this update. I spend most of my time testing NES, SNES, GBA, and PS1 with this update, and I only really found a few issues with sound. I thought that outputting HDMI would tax this old chip a lot, and some of the more difficult games wouldn't run the same, but I didn't find any issues yet. I will say that some of these old consoles won't look that good on a very large TV, but anything that's 20 to 30 inches shouldn't look that bad. Depending on your firmware, you may also have some new scaling options and filtering settings for most emulators. I checked to see if the PS1 widescreen option looked any better, and it didn't, so I'm going to stick with the full screen option. You can also choose to add bilinear filtering to your games, which is very helpful if you're going to play this on a bigger TV, since it will look very pixelated if you don't. Some games have very jarring background textures if you don't filter the image on an HD TV. Hopefully you can see from the Crash Team Racing footage on screen what you can expect from this beta firmware. There's no screen tearing, and the audio signal is good enough for now. I'm using a capture device to record this footage with bilinear filtering on, so it should be a realistic representation of what this will look like on your TV. I will note that you can unplug your HDMI cable mid-game, and your device's screen will automatically turn back on, which is a nice feature. It will also allow you to quickly see if there are any performance issues. For the most part, I really only found problems with some Game Boy scaling options and audio distortion in Genesis games. Everything else was perfectly adequate for an update that I never thought we would get. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this update. Let me know how your tests go. Happy gaming everyone. Taki out.